When it comes to digital electronics, what does come to your mind? Do you think of your digital watch, digital multimeter or the digital world we live in today? Leave your comments on the comment section below. So then, what does digital electronic really mean? Any electronics with two discrete value, either high or low, or truth and false, or one and zero, is known as digital electronics, which its value one equals plus five volts and its value 0 equals 0 volt. In today's video, we are going to learn one of the most important topics in digital electronics, the logic gate. How they work, how to keep them to memory without forgetting their functions. These are the basics that lead to digital systems that we see and make use of today. So what are you waiting for? Click on that subscribe button and let's dive into it. There are eight types of logic gate: the buffer, the NOT, the AND gate, the OR gate, the NOT gate, the NOR gate, the XOR gate, and the XNOR gate. All of these have different functions. That's how they respond to their inputs and where they are needed to perform a particular task, either as a large circuit, flip-flop circuit, counters, and memory. The buffer, from its truth table, it only has a single input and a single output which says the buffer output is only high if only its input is high too but goes low with an input low the NOT gate is also called the inverter it is the complement of the buffer from its truth table it complements its input at its output which means if the input is low the output will be high and if the input is high its output will go low the AND gate. It has two inputs A and B and a single output. In a simple, the trick to remember the AND gate is its keyword AND which says if only its input A and B are high, the output will go high but any low input will keep its output low. You can see when the both input switches are off or low, the output still stays low and if either A or B switches is turned on leaving only one switch low the output still stays low until A and B input switches are turned on then we can have a high output and that's why it's called an AND gate. The OR gate. This is also easy to remember. Just remember OR as its keyword which says the output of an OR gate is high if only A or B or both inputs are high. Otherwise, any both input being low, the output will be low. And that's why it's called OR gate. The NOT. The NOT gate is just a complement of a AND gate output. What that means, it's only low if A and B inputs are high. Otherwise, any both input being low or any input being low, the output will be high. But why is that the opposite of AND gate? It is because of the bubble you see at its output. It inverts the signal, which means it is a combination of AND gate and NOT gate. NOT plus AND equals NOT gate. The same also happens for the NOT gate. It is the combination of the OR gate and the NOT gate. So the NOT output is only high if both inputs are low, but low if any input goes high. The next two logic gates are the advanced type, the exclusive OR gate and the exclusive NOT gate. For the exclusive OR, also in short, known as XOR, it only changes the result of both inputs in an OR gate. When the both input goes high, instead of a high output as in OR gate, we have a low output. So which only implies that it is only high if only input A or B are high, then output will be high. Otherwise, any other actions will result to a low output. And lastly is the exclusive NOR, also known as XNOR gate. This same happens to the XNOR 
it complements both inputs of an OR gate, going high and inverts the result at its output, giving a high signal. So the XNOR is only high if only input A and B are low or input A and B are high, otherwise other actions will be kept slow. So that's all for logic gates in today's video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button or you won't see my upcoming videos on your YouTube home. Make sure to do that, like and share, leave a comment about what you like about my video and what I should improve on my channel. Thank you, see you next time.